In this video, I'm going to show you why I think this will be the future of VFX, and I'll show you all the incredible things that you can do with it. Okay, let's get into it. So what is Runaway LF? Well, it allows you to transform your footage, whether you want to remove, add, change, relight, you can choose to do whatever you want with your footage. I've been doing a lot of testing and really pushing the boundaries with what's possible, and I've had some pretty surprising results. So I'll break this video up into different sections, and I'll also include a montage at the end with some of my favorite clips. So first up, let's have a look at removing objects from videos. This is going to be extremely useful for filmmakers if you want to remove unwanted objects from your video. I'm sure you've all seen the mirror shots in films where you're wondering where the camera person is, so I've got this video of me in front of a mirror, and as you can see, that would be a pretty tricky shot to remove the person. So just make sure you're on a video generation page, and you have to make sure you're on the Gen 4 model to use Runway LF. So what if I wanted to remove myself from the video? I've uploaded the video of me in front of the mirror. All I put into the prompt was remove the person. And this is the video I got back. I think it's done an incredible job at filling in the blanks where I was standing. Now it has changed a few things, like you can see the door is quite different. It's taken away the glass parts of the door, but it's still really impressive that it can do this. And this next example is a bit harder. I've got this stock footage of people on bikes. The first time I ran this video, I said remove the people, and it just removed the people and the bikes, which is still really impressive but I wanted to see if I could keep the bikes in the shot, but just remove the people. So I tried it again and put remove only the people, not the bikes. And he came back with this. I know the feet are still on the pedals, but I think it's really impressive still that it's managed to know where the people are, remove them, and still keep the bikes in shot. And I can imagine people in the comments will be saying stuff like, well, it's only five seconds and the quality isn't that great. But I think that's missing the point. What I'm really looking at here is the potential going forward. I'm sure one to two years from now, this will be in a much better state. Now, looking at the loss of quality, Alef struggles with fast moving things. If you want to retain more quality, maybe use a shot with less movement in it. I'll also show you certain ways on how you can get better quality later in this video. Now let's have a look at changing and replacing parts of the video. So I'm sure you've seen that you can change the weather in different shots, so I decided to test it out for myself. So I just got this quick recording of me cycling my bike. So for this shot, I actually filmed it for 15 seconds, and because runway LF can only do five seconds, each five seconds I decided to change the look of the scenery, and it turned out really well. Now this is a way that you can get around the five second limit. You can do a continuous shot and then just change it each five seconds. The first change I did was to change it into nighttime. This is really impressive, as a lot of films actually film day for night. So they'll film during the day and then alter the look to make it seem like nighttime. And Aleph does a really good job at altering the lighting. As you can see, I've changed the weather throughout the video. I was really impressed with how it took the footage and added those elements into it. And when stitched together, I think it's a really unique look. And one I even deleted all of the cars out of the shot. With LF, you can replace and change things as well. And as you saw in the intro, me holding my prop gun, I was able to change it into anything I wanted. And also myself and the background, which is extremely impressive. If you are just changing one aspect of your video, make sure to specify in the prompt what you want to change and what you don't want to change. So for this video here where I've changed the weapon, I said replace the white object he's holding and then what I wanted to turn it into. Like I got it to shoot out bubbles, flames and whatever you want it to do. And I also turned it into a little cat, which actually worked really well as the cat was animated. If you want to add a custom design for something, I wanted to do some tests with different helmets on myself, but I had a specific helmet in mind. You can actually add a reference image to control the look that you're going for. From my testing, it doesn't put the exact design into the video. So for this example here, I've got this image of a motorbike helmet, and I've got this video of me, and then I've added into the prompt, the man is wearing the helmet in the image, high quality. I think it looks awesome, but as you can see, it's not 100% the exact same as the reference image. It's kind of added in a few different things. And you will notice after using reference images, it kind of simplifies the qualities a bit, but it still kind of achieved the look I was going for. And the great thing is it's tracked to the head perfectly. This is a tip on how to get better quality outputs for your final video. So what I did with this video of me is I cropped into my face and then uploaded it into Runway. 
and here's the video that Runway created. I can then export that and put it on top of the original footage. You may have to do a bit of masking when putting it back onto the wide shot, but it shouldn't be too hard. So now that I've cropped down that video of me wearing the helmet, it actually looks higher quality than what it would look like if I was to just give Runway the wide shot of my video. And remember, you can upscale to 4K in Runway to get that extra bit of quality. You can also experiment with changing your outfits as well. So here's a few different outfits that I've changed into. So in this one, I just said the man's whole jacket is glowing blue neon, but not to change his face. So as you can see, it's done a pretty good job at retaining the quality of my face, but it's managed to track and change the look of my jacket, which is pretty sweet. So to add another layer to this footage as well, I wanted to change the background. So here in the background, I've added some fog. There's a sandstorm. It's snowing behind me. And this one's really cool. I've got a truck going through my garden and it's tracked in perfectly. And I tested it with some explosions. What I love about these shots, you can see the light from the fire kind of lighting up the tree trunk, which is a really nice touch. It makes it feel like it's all part of that environment. And I love this shot here where I changed my gun for a sci-fi gun and made the background a battlefield. It allows you to get really experimental with your shots. This was a really cool test where I imagined that I was holding something and then I just prompted it with he is holding up a huge boulder. And I think the result is incredible. It actually feels like I'm holding the boulder. And in this one here, I was just holding a tube and I wanted to see if I could turn it into a flashlight. So I actually prompted it to make the room darker and for it to create a beam of light coming out of the tube. Now I know the beam of light isn't perfect, but hopefully this just gets you thinking on what kind of things you can experiment with. And in this video here, I'm just stroking my cat and I wanted to see how well it would deal with changing my cat into a baby tiger and to see if it would be able to create a natural contact. And I'm super impressed with how this turned out. Now the quality isn't perfect, but it actually feels like I'm petting the baby tiger. And then I asked it to remove the cat and it just looks like I'm stroking nothing. It's incredibly impressive. With this test here, I wanted to see how well it would track the object. So I filmed myself with this yellow ball and just started chucking it up and down. Then I just prompted it with turn the yellow ball into a fireball. And I'm really happy with how the video came out. It's got some really nice smoke elements coming from the fireball as well. And again, it does struggle with fast moving objects. So I changed the ball into a Pokeball, but as you see, when I chuck it up and down, it gets confused and it can't quite hold that Pokeball look. Now this one I really like. It's a glowing yellow ball with smoke. I think it does an incredible job with the smoke simulation on this one. And this is one of my favorite shots as well, where I turned the ball into a glowing blue ball. I made sure to say in the prompt it was nighttime as well, so it turned everything dark except for that ball that is glowing. So then the ball turned into my light source, and I think it's an incredible looking shot. From the original footage that was taken at daytime to the final output, it's just really remarkable at what this thing can do. And for this next test, I wanted to see how well it dealt with me coming close to the camera with an object. So here's me turning the yellow ball into a flaming ball. It does a great job at tracking the object as it's coming closer to the lens. Now this one was really fun. I said turn the yellow ball into a ball of smoke and lightning. And look at that. It's an incredible smoke simulation with some kind of janky lightning on it. And this one is very impressive. I said turn the yellow ball into a fishbowl. Now watch as the fishbowl comes close. You'll be able to see the refraction through the fishbowl. That blows my mind to be honest how it can kind of realize what's behind the glass and distort it in a natural looking way. I think it deals with see-through objects really well. And yeah, I'm very, very impressed with this shot. And here I turned it into a dripping ball of goo. So again, the simulations work really well. And here again, playing with light. You can see there's a bit of yellow light reflected on the face as I move it forward. So it's definitely worth experimenting with turning objects into different things. Now I want to show you how you can use markers in your videos to manipulate the footage. For this shot here, I just made the letter X on the ground with some blue tape, and then I prompted it with, there's a deep hole in the ground where the blue X is. It's done a great job with tracking it into the shot. And these examples were really fun. I took out my foldable blue screen and chucked it on the ground and decided to film around it. So I've just got this footage of me looking at the blue screen. Then I prompted it with, turn the blue object into a giant hole in the ground. And I think the result looks great. 
it has really nice contact when my feet are walking on the ground, and a pretty believable shadow as well. And then I tried loads of different outputs. Now, this one didn't quite work out. I asked it to replace it with a mirror, and it gets kind of horrifying. I have no idea what that is in the mirror. It's pretty creepy. And in this other video, I jump over the blue screen. And again, it did a great job of me jumping over the hole. I just think this is a really fun way to use it. A really fun thing you can do is control motion with simple animations. So for this example here, I added in a solid yellow circle and then just animated it to move slightly in my footage. Then in Runaway, I just said replace the moving floating yellow ball with a ball of pouring water. And as you can see in the footage, the yellow circle has been replaced with a pouring ball of water, which is pretty cool. But I actually wanted the water to fall onto the ground, so then I just repeated it with the water is falling on the floor. And I think the result is pretty amazing. It's added in some really nice water simulation, and this gives you the control, so I could move this yellow ball anywhere with full control on where it goes. And here I turned it into a flaming ball with smoke, and it was dripping lava onto the ground. And in this one I turned it into a ball of light. It's really good at creating those VFX in-painting kind of shots. So for this example here I've got this close-up of me, and I tested it with a reference image with me with a half robot face, and I didn't add any prompt into it. It doesn't look exactly like the image I gave it, but I'm still happy with the tracking on the face. And it's done a great job at in-painting all of those features. And you can also experiment with turning yourself into different styles. Now you can either choose to prompt with your style, or you can add a reference image with the certain style that you want to go for. Another awesome thing you can do with LF is changing the camera angles of your shot. So for this example here, I've got this stock footage of someone sitting on a sofa, and then I just said change the camera angle to be a wide shot of the room with the person in it. And it created this video, which was pretty sweet. It looks very similar to the video I gave it, but with a wider angle view. So this can be really useful if you only have one video, but you want to create multiple angles and maybe cut between different shots. And in this one I said change the camera angle to be outside of the house and looking through the window to the room that she's in. And while she's not in the same position, it still feels like you're watching the same person from that same video. Which again is really impressive and I think it's going to be a very useful way of using this tool in the future. And it can make you feel like you've got a bigger production with multiple camera angles. For these VFX shots, I just decided to film some random things and to see if I could get a left to create some really unique looking visuals. So here I just filmed around an apartment block and I wanted to see if I could get water pouring out of the window. And I just prompted it with water is pouring out of the window on the building. And I think it's done a great job at recognizing where the window is and for the water just to be pouring out of that window. And here's another one with some water coming out the building. Now it's not the best quality water, but just imagine this with a higher fidelity and it will be a really cool shot. And here's some videos of me generating some destruction. Now I moved the camera on purpose as I wanted to see if it would do a realistic perspection shift on the effects that are happening. And I think as I'm moving around, it does a really good job at making it feel like it's in that space. The perspective on it looks pretty spot on. And again, I wanted to test the tracking capabilities of LF. So I decided to film my grubby alloys on my car, and I prompted Runway to change them into shiny gold alloys. And I'm pretty happy with the results. It's tracked it perfectly. And here I prompted it to change them into glass wheels. And then I thought, could I get the wheel to be animated as well? So I said in this one, the car wheel is spinning with smoke and sparks coming out. And I think it looks pretty cool. And I turned my car into glass and got a sweet upgrade to a gold car. But I think I'm gonna have to get a new car. As you'll see, it's just full of random stuff. All right, so now I'm just gonna show you a montage of some of my favorite clips with a comparison against the original footage.
With Runaway, you can burn through credits using this tool. My recommendation would actually be to get the Unlimited for maybe just even one month. You could plan out all of the videos that you need to do and generate them with Runaway in that one month and then cancel it after if you need to. I only say this because with the unlimited plan, it just allows you to kind of experiment and really push it and not worry about running out of credits and maybe settling for an effect that you weren't really happy with. I've had a ton of fun using Runaway's LF and I'm going to be testing it a lot more. If you could let me know what was your favorite shot and leave it in the comments below, that would be awesome. And if there's anything I've missed, an effect you would like to see in future videos, then please let me know as well. I really do think that these kind of tools will play a part in VFX in the future and they're only going to get better and better. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that and make sure to check out my other videos. My name is Jack and I will see you in the next one.